What is up YouTube? This is Alex AK Foreign. Today we're going to talk about this little budget build I made based on the Intel Pentium G4560 dual core processor. And I'll explain why I actually chose this CPU over the others. So let's start. The Intel Pentium G4560 is Intel's latest Pentium KB Lake processor. Now here it says dual core but actually it's a dual core with hyper threading so basically it's just a slower version of the i3 with some less important features disabled which don't really play a role in gaming scenarios now, this cpu is not the fastest but it'll definitely do its job for a budget build like this now with the motherboard it's a bit more difficult story as this is an h110m motherboard which means it's actually skylake and this CPU is KB Lake. So that means that this motherboard will most likely require a BIOS update and I'll link these links in the description below but basically you should go to this page and here is the H110M HDS R3.0 requires the 1.10 version of the BIOS for KB Lake CPUs to run on it. So you click here and it'll open in a new window and you will have this instant flash way to update so you push this red cross button and here you have a perfect description of how to execute azurock instant flash just follow this guideline and you will be totally fine it's not scary at all and you'll be rocking a kb lake cpu in this motherboard no problem this is officially supported by azurock by the way so no worries there for the memory, I went with the cheapest 8GB stick I could find, the Crucial 8GB 2133. I myself use the DDR3 version of this. It's totally fine and will do its job just as well as any other stick. It's just not as pretty, but who cares? This is a budget build. For the hard drive, I went with the Seagate Constellation ES500 gig one. It's the cheapest 7200 RPM a hard drive with 32 megs of cache. Now all the other ones were either 16 or 8 or whatever. Now that's really slow. This is a SATA 3 gigabytes per second interface so it's not that fast but it'll do its job. It'll be slow but you'll be fine. It'll run your games. The first thing you may probably will want to upgrade in this PC is getting a new SSD in the future or installing your OS and stuff like that. That's probably the biggest downside of this build. For the power supply, I went with the EVGA 430 watt 80 plus certified power supply. Now it's definitely not bronze rated or anything like that, but it's 80 plus, which means 400 watts of power will be totally fine for this power supply. And our build will be drawing around 260. So that means that even if you overclock the video card, you'll be maybe at 330. That's totally fine for this build, so no worries there. With the case, I went with the BitPhoenix Nova ATX, uh, no window case. It's the cheapest and I've actually had experience with this case, so it's fairly decent. And for the price, it'll definitely do its job. For the graphics card, I went with the best bang for your book card there is right now. It's the Radeon RX 474GB version, and I chose the MSI Armor OC version. Definitely not the best cooler, but it's also not the worst. It's totally average. It'll do its job just fine. You can probably get around 200 megahertz extra out of the card if you overclock it, but definitely set up a custom fan curve to make it work properly. I made a video about setting up a custom fan curve that I'll link in the card of the video. I guess this is it. The $450 is the total price of this build. It's definitely not your uh, $2,000 powerhouse or even a $1,000 build. It's probably limited a little bit by the CPU and the hard drive could definitely be better, but for $450 or $54 if you don't count the rebate, you probably can't get a better computer. New. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll gladly ask or help you out with anything that uh, concerns you. I thank you for your attention and hope to see you later.